What's going on everybody, C4 here, and today, someone cue up the music from the number one chart hitter when I was born, End of the Road, by Boyz II Men, because it is the end of the road here in Madden 18, realistic rebuilds, it's been one hell of a journey from September all the way pretty much to April, we had a good run, we had a great run, made some friends along the way, you know, did a bunch of everything in between, did some damn business, uh, ultimately, rebuilds were harder in Madden 18. Yeah, the sim was terrible. The sim AI was terrible. The scripting was terrible. Team building not the hottest. But we're, we're battling. And at the end of the video, win or loss, we'll have our final record of how we did. Last year in Madden 17, don't remember the exact number, but I do recall we had more Super Bowl winning rebuilds than losing ones. And this year, there's nothing we can do to bring itself, uh, you know, back into the green. But we can try our best. We're on a win streak here. I think we've won the last three or four rebuilds. Because, you know, again, the teams we're, re we're rebuilding right now are pretty damn good. So we're looking at the Rams, and I kind of had to decide what I was going to do with the Rams. Was I going to use the rosters, day one rosters, which I have used? Or am I going to use the end of season rosters, which I've used before? What I decided to do with one Liberty, because there's one player I just I wanted to get a pick for and I couldn't. So I was just like, ah, screw it, we'll keep him on the roster. We have their offseason roster up to date. So we don't have Sammy Watkins on the offense. A little, little disappointed not to have that. He would have been a nice guy to hold on to the rebuild. Uh, we don't have Robert Quinn. We don't have Tremaine Johnson. But we do still have Alec Ogletree because he was traded for a pick straight up. And if, you can, if we're not getting that pick in this game, I'm just going to hold on to him. Um, but look at that. Dominic and Sue right in the middle. Marcus Peters, Akeem Tlaib, Nikel Roby Coleman. Defense looking pretty scary. Linebacking core is absolutely terrible, which we know that is the number one area we're going to want to look at rebuilding. Uh, plus, you know, Sue and uh, Tlaib are on one-year deals, so... I know Sue is worth re-signing, but we have to pay a lot of these guys some money. And uh, we're going to kind of find out the stress that Rams fans and Rams GM, unless they can pull a Howie Roseman, are going to have in the near future. That's kind of the reason why I wanted to do this. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be the rebuild of the Rams. I'm expecting to win the Super Bowl. I'm expecting to have one of the top teams uh, in the league. But we have to go out and we have to go do it. And actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move Gerald Everett to a wide receiver. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, so, you know, the future of the series, future of the Rebuild series, before we actually get into it here. Uh, like I said, I, you know, we may look at doing a couple revivals here and there. I've had the Rebuild Ultimate League or whatever, the Ultimate Rebuild League. Um, that was posed as a suggestion from my subs. I might do that. I have a new series in NCAA that I think I'm going to end the Black Knights. Like, whenever we finish with the Black Knights franchise, this is going to be the final year. And then all the Patreon stuff and, and a little bit of a rebuild is going to go towards the NCAA series that I've been wanting to do for five years now. Finally, I just, you know what? I said, screw it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to play something that I enjoy playing uh, until, you know, Madden 19 comes up. There's still going to be Madden 18 content for sure. Don't get that twisted. But it's going to be the new big series on the channel now that rebuilds are done. So that being said, let's make sure we can go out, get a victory with this one. And, uh, you know, have as most win many wins as humanly possible. So let's jump into it. All right, we actually got an offer for Alec Ogletree, a couple of them. Just took a little bit later. I would just trip in the Giants if I actually got one. So now, I, you know, I feel like we'll just, we'll go best case scenario here. And uh, what that means is clearly we're going to want that Cleveland Browns second round pick, which might emerge to a first round pick. So thank you for everything you've done, creating a massive hole. We're really going to see just how well the Rams defense can do with literally no linebackers and see if uh, linebackers mean absolutely nothing here in the Madden 18 simulation. All right, so look at the signings here. Um, well, uh, the Marcus Peters one's glitch. He's under contract for two years, so I don't. Uh, just because we had to move him via free agency, that'll be fine. But Lamarcus Joyner was retained by the Rams, as well as the Kel Roby Coleman. Uh, they did bring back John Sullivan. That's where I think. I actually think they brought back easily as well. These top four guys were able to come back with John Sullivan, where he's 32. I might just let him at the open market if I can't draft one. Uh, or scout a good-looking one. We'll probably have to look at bringing him back. But we'll bring back Roby Coleman and Joyner for show. And here we are at season's end, 9-7 and seven in the wild card. I don't know what it's going to have to take for us to, you know, I mean, 9-7 is an acceptable wild, acceptable wild card spot, but I don't know what it's going to take for us to make the playoffs. That would happen to go the full the full long way. 9-7, uh, all things considered with this roster, is probably a little disappointing. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, we'll see what we did here. So we came second in the NFC West. Looking at our stats on the year, Jared Goff, third, we'll round it up, 35. That's a pretty generous round up. 3,500 passing yards. 25 TDs to 10 interceptions. That's acceptable from him. Uh, running the ball, we got 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns from Todd Gurley, almost 615 from Lance Dunbar. 
which leads me to believe that this is going to be a scheme that you're going to want two running backs in. So maybe we'll draft a running back higher than expected and form a nice little tandem in there. Maybe I'll just say fuck it and draft Saquon Barkley and have that as a little tandem. Uh, we're going to have receiving 78 catches, 800 yards, 5 TDs for Cooper Cup, which was nice because he played on the outside and not in the slot. We got 1,000 yards, 7 TDs here for Woods. 536 and 4 from Higby. 507 from Everett, so making the transition from tight end. Uh, where I think we, I think when you make the straight transition, he goes to like a 67, and we're able with all the XP to get him up. I think he's 71, 72, so that might work out there, and Gurley just being an absolute animal. Uh, on the defensive front, we got 139 tackles, two sacks, two picks from Mark Barron, 119 from Samson Ebelcom, two sacks as well. Mother of God, we got 17 tacks for loss, 24 sacks from Aaron Donald, so breaking the sack record. We got 14 sacks from Brockers, 22 tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks for Dominic Sue. I'm going to try to make that contract work. And bear back to Dalvin Kinsu. Uh, much more priority over him than, say, Aqib Tlaib. Uh, in the interception front, we got four from Larkin Stoner, two from Barron, two from Tlaib, two from Nikel Roby Coleman, one from Marcus Peters. A couple singles there as well. Looking at the yearly awards here. Quickly, MVP went to Russell Wilson with no one. Not one. Okay. Make it from our team. Uh, the NFC Offensive Player of the Year went to Russell Wilson. That's a joke. That's a joke, right? Todd Gurley has 2,000 yards from scrimmage, like 20 touchdowns. To, oh, man. He was a player of the year. <laughs> you get 24 sacks to break the sack record, and Brandon Graham is there at one. I mean, he might have, he might have broke the record, but uh, I think I, I, even though I like seeing my Eagles guy there, we probably got robbed. Uh, offensive rookie of the year went to Chris Carson with the Seahawks. Uh, Cooper Cup and Gerald Everett coming 8 and 9, respectively. Defensive rookie of the year went to Ruben Foster with no love to Samson Ebucom. Oh, there he is. There we go. Rams. There you go. Number four. Okay. All right. Well, we know. Got robbed a little bit. Got to go the long way through the playoffs. But ultimately, it is what it is. And uh, we're just going to play the moments. See what happens. See what kind of damage we can do. All right. So here we go in the snow in our first playoff game. And I'm feeling uh, not super confident because we're going up against the 12-4 and four Seahawks. But I expect our team to show some damn fight here. And we are, there we go, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. We're moving the ball here in the second half. For some reason, we're only an 85 overall base, which is a little surprising. I get our linebackers suck and our offensive lines will work in progress. But I feel like, all things considered, probably should be closer to 90 than we are to 85. As you can see right now, we're taking it to the 12-4 Seahawks of 20-7. And we're controlling the ball here, controlling the clock. Once again, in the red zone, we punch it in. It looks like we're going to be moving on to the NFC Divisional round here, fellas. Oh, this is a body bag. Usually, this, I mean, the Seahawks are usually a problem when we actually play against them, but that was, that was literally, that was ruthless. That was ruthless. And we didn't even pillage them. We used the updated Rams roster, but everything else pretty much stayed the same. Looking at there, 167 yards, two TDs for Jared Goff, 168 yards from Todd Gurley. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is a running back attack right there. I don't know if Dunbar is going to be our option long term, but I know for sure we're going to need, like, the Minnesota Vikings rebuild. We used two running backs the whole time. I think we're going to have to have two running backs here for sure. Uh, but this path, this little journey continues as we move on to the NFC Divisional Round. All right, so we're going on from taking a very good divisional rival, 12-4 Seahawks, and going against the 15-1 Eagles in the next round. If this team can do some damage, it's going to be one of the more glorious runs as we just traded Insta TDs. And we are, look at that, up 21-7, a high-scoring first quarter where our defense is definitely the strength of the team. But uh, we're actually, you know, I'm not. We're not out of the woods yet. It looks like our defense is not really coming to play. But the fact that, you know what, I, I feel somewhat confident, to be honest with you. If we can get one more TD, I think we might be out of the woods. Well, let's let them get the eight point. Oh, they did what? This sim's going against the grain. Where is this untouchable TD that they get? Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh. Oh! Come on, finish the job! And we're in the red zone. Oh my god, they just did it. They did the deal. The Rams are the only team, the first team we have found here so far that has been able to overcome the Sim. This is ridiculous. Uh, on the day, 288, three touchdowns for Goff, 144 yards for Todd Gurley. Good god. What a shootout. What a performance. What a run here in year one of the Rams rebuild as we're moving to the NFC Championship game. 
All right, next up in the NFC Championship game, the 13-3 Falcons. Like, we're literally going through all, like, outside of the Vikings, the dominant teams in the NFC, and more importantly, the dominant teams usually in the sim. So, um, I mean, you know, the run is about to end probably, you know, it's the Madden sim. It's, it's going to be crushing defeat, but if we can go to the Super Bowl, man, it, this is seeming like it might be a good rebuild to end off. I'm not frustrated with the game. There's no real cheese. Win or lose, we were the 9-7 pulling a New York Giants type team. And uh, they've, they've took on really, really good teams here. And uh, we're keeping it close, man. Come on, punch it in. Oh, no. Punch it in. Oh, there we go. Tying it up. What? Man, this is like ridiculous. We're playing particularly well. And I think we just won the ball game. Oh my god, we're going to the Super Bowl. I mean, it's not absolutely ridiculous. Because this team is very, very good. This is a, from a Madden standpoint, a Super Bowl caliber team. But the fact that they're at 85, which I've never got the Super won a Super Bowl with a team that's that bad. In, you know, bad. We're talking bad. and We're talking more so because you need to be a 90. You need to be overwhelmingly good to win with the Sim. Uh, this is one hell of a run, man. 27 to 24. 223, two TDs from golf, 131 yards from Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley's having himself a goddamn uh, Terrell Davis type run here in the playoffs. As the Rams are going to the Super Bowl in year one, it'd be very nice to clutch the victory year one and the years two to five, or we'll go two to four if we win it year one. Uh, we'll be just seeing how dominant we can keep this Rams team. So now, next up, it's Super Bowl time. Here we are in the Super Bowl. What other opponent was it going to be aside the New England Patriots? So uh, let's see how well we do, man. I'm actually kind of hoping that we win the Super Bowl. I haven't won the Super Bowl in year one ever, I don't think. I think year two was the earliest we've ever won it. And that was with the Chargers last year. So we'll see. We can't put our chickens before, can't count our chickens before they hatch because you never know. It's Tom Brady. Come on, baby. Tied up at 14 in the second half. Punch it in. Can't settle for field goals. You cannot settle for field goals. Tom Brady out there. There you go. There's the swing and momentum. Oh my god. Come on. Come on. Stop them. How do you stop them? Come on. This is embarrassing. Oh, that's an embarrassing performance. Super Bowl year one's not bad. But considering how we played against every other top dog in the NFC, the fact that Tom Brady pretty much had the same kind of you know stat line as he did against the Eagles, give or take 100 yards. At least we're competitive, and it'll give the fire that we need to continue on with this rebuild to get better. Uh, you know, big new, big um, decision to make with Adama Gansu. Like I said, I'm going to try to extend him, but uh, my hopes aren't up that much, because obviously the defense didn't come to play. Very much like the Super Bowl, you know? For some reason, defense just doesn't tend to exist in the Super Bowl. It's all about a couple of plays. And, uh, yeah, when Tom Brady goes for 90% completion rate, you're probably not going to win unless you're the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Rams ain't the Eagles. So we're going to have to, you know, re recollect ourselves, regroup. And, um, yeah, year two. Let's get into it. All right, so we weren't able to re-sign anyone in free agency. We were able to bring back Ndamukong and Sue, which was nice. Actually, an affordable deal. Uh, so here is our draft. A very solid draft class because, you know, it's the last rebuild. Uh, I decided to use like, modify as many prospects as possible so that I can use them. Uh, so I had I haven't used any of the Georgia backs. I had Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle, and this prospect kind of fit Nick Chubb more than Sony Michelle. I mean the speed's a little off, but uh, for a guy that had less carrying or less catching, sorry, it was more of a carrying back. I decided to make him Nick Chubb, 76 normal. Uh, then with our second round pick, maybe the best center prospect I've seen. He was a 77 superstar, so we made him Billy Price from Ohio State, pretty easy. Uh, Billy Price is regards the top center in this year's draft class. Uh, a little competition from James Daniels from Iowa, but ultimately I do think it's Billy Price. Uh, then the third round here, this is a, this is like the only reach just because I haven't used debatable with the top tackle in the class, Connor Williams from Texas yet. So I had a 76 tackle, which, you know, normal. I mean, if you look at real Madden ratings, Connor Williams probably will pull a 76 in that territory. Um, so yeah, here we go. We're going with Connor Williams here. Uh, even though, we'll just act like, you know, maybe he had a medical. Maybe his, his injury acted up or something like that. And uh, he hurt himself at his pro day. Uh, then anyways, move to the third round here. Great pick. 80 overall. Only normal dev. But we made a Michael Gallup from Colorado State. Uh, one of the best wide receivers in college football. And, we'll, you know, we kind of had Gerald Everett as that, you know, slot wide receiver. Probably going to get beat out now by Michael Gallup. Maybe we can move him back to tight end. 
Uh, fourth round here, we got Colby Gassett from Appalachia State, 76 normal. Uh, and then in the sixth round, straight up guessing, just guessing, he looked phenomenal. Didn't scout him at all. Turned out to be a 78 quick tight end. So we made it Dallas Goder from South Dakota State. Again, another big name tight end that probably wouldn't fall to this range. And really by probably, I mean no chance in hell. But I've yet to use him in any rebuild. So again, we'll just act like a medical or something like that. Act up. So now we have, uh, you know, a couple, couple big names here from the draft class. Uh, so who needs who needs free agency when you can draft as well as this? Moving on from a Super Bowl loss, trying to recover and actually do the deal in year number two. Let's get into it. All right, so as we get ready for year number two, here is our roster. Looking at the offensive side of things, we got the Mr. 9 to 5, Todd Gurley. Uh, offense, you know, the wide receivers, I haven't really developed a whole lot. I think Cup and Robert Woods, maybe a one point bump, maybe. Uh, now we have Michael Gallup, we have Gerald Everett here. Uh, offensive line, Billy Price, Connor Williams. We're playing Connor Williams at right guard just as a rookie to start because obviously he's there to succeed Andrew Whitworth, but he's going to play for probably one more year. Uh, Higby and Dallas Godart make up our tight ends. On the defensive front, well, we're looking still pretty scary. Uh, you know, a little bit of a dip in production here in terms of overall just everything going from Aqib to leave to Nikel Roby Coleman. Uh, it's still not a liability. That front three is terrifying. Our safeties are very good. Ibukam's actually going to develop here. My worries with the linebackers, I think Ibukam will develop into like a mid-80s type player when all is said and done. Uh, the interior, we have Mark Barron, which kind of sucks. I signed this Tyson guy as a free agent. I just like the stats. He had 85 tackle right away, so I was like, okay, we'll try you out there. Uh, but ultimately, a linebacker course sucks because there was nothing in the draft. Our draft class looked impressive, but we pretty much, there was no middle linebacker in free agency over like a 75, and the draft was absolutely terrible. Everyone was a bust. So, uh, you know, hopefully, maybe next year, we'll get some talent. Maybe we'll with Marcus Joyner. Marcus Joyner played a little bit of linebacker in high school. Um, but yeah, there's our team, and I expect, once again, to be playoff contenders and try to make another Super Bowl run. So let's get into it. So here's what Raven fans are going to fear. is, uh, is the, the 2019 to 2020 free agency period because realistically, Saffold probably could go, but you need to sign these three guys. And that is $150 million plus in contracts. You need to get Gurley and Donald. How does Gurley not have a superstar dev? Which is kind of questionable. At least we know we'll save his XP up and buy one. Um, so how much cap do we have? We have a decent amount of cap, but uh, yeah, in, in real life, not the Madden world, this is going to be kind of a scary period for the Rams. But we'll we'll look at residing these three guys for sure. And if if we have a couple extra bucks, maybe throw Sap, maybe try to throw Sap on a nice little deal. All right, so we were at the season's end, and just like that, look at that, we got a little bit of a buy. First round by everyone. Oh my god, that XP for Mr. Todd Gurley. We're getting that superstar dev, baby. 12 and 4 in the NFC West. Very nice. It's a beautiful thing. Got that NFC West title. Look at Jared Goff on the year again. Team is just running the ball. That's not a great year from Jared Goff whatsoever. 37 yards, uh, 3,700 yards, 23 TDs, 16 picks. Offensive line did the job, only getting sacked 24 times. I'm going to guess our running backs had some pretty insane numbers. Uh, Todd Gurley, 1,700 yards. 17 TDs. That's definitely one of the better years we've seen rushing here in the sim. 500 yards and 8 TDs from the rookie Nick Chubb. Uh, I don't know why Jared Goff running so much, but it seems like literally the exact same game plan that happened in the last rebuild with the Minnesota Vikings is being applied here. They're running the ball an awful lot. Uh, as far as receiving is concerned, 7-7-7-9-3 seven, 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 is the stat line for here. 77 catches. We'll round up to 800 yards. Receiving two touchdowns. We got 700 yards, 6 TDs from Robert Woods. 804 from Michael Gallup, 503 from Higby, Gurley with four. Oh my God, Gurley with, Gurley with 2100 yards. Like pretty much like a replicate of what he did last year, minus a couple TDs. I'll take that. Uh, on the defensive front, we got 128 tackles, Mark Barron, 106 from Jordan Evans. We got 23 sacks from Aaron Donald. So one less than what he hit last year. 12 and a half from Michael Brockers, 12 from Adama Kinsu. All these misses. That's so dominant, man. So goddamn dominant. Uh, next up to front, we got five picks from Marcus Peters, three from Webster, two from Joyner, two from... I mean, for a not great secondary, like, overall, that's pretty good. Like, those are those are numbers for, like, secondaries that are all 90s plus that I've seen in rebuilds. I mean, they're no slouches. we got a bunch of 80s. Well, I'll take it. So looking quickly at the yearly awards before we jump into our playoff run. MVP went to Aaron Rodgers with Todd Gurley coming in at number five. We got uh, the Coach of the Year go to us. Sean McVay got himself a nice Coach of the Year award. Offensive Player of the Year went to Aaron Rodgers with Gurley coming in at number three. 
Defensive player of the year went to Aaron Donald. Very nice to him to get that award. Uh, no one else showed up. Offensive rookie of the year. Nick Chubb coming at number three. Michael Gallup at number five. Dallas Goder at number seven. Defensive rookie of the year. I don't even think we drafted everyone on a defense. So, very nice. 12 and 4 NFC West title. And as the big dogs, last year we were the underdogs. Got those Philadelphia dog masks and rode our way to the Super Bowl. This year we're the favorites. And we're taking on the 10 and 6. Washington, not racist names in the divisional round. I feel pretty, I feel confident. I feel confident. We'll, see, we'll keep it at that. Uh, we're going to spend up this XP, and then we're going to do the damn thing. All right, so here we go. Against the Redskins, we're the overwhelming favorite, which means I don't know what's going to happen with this. I have no idea. But uh, we're looking all right to a hot start. 14-3 to three here in the first half, and it looks like we're dominating a little bit. Getting ready to pull ahead here. Punch it in. No field goals. I guess we'll settle for the field goal. Oh, my God. Kirk Cousins and company. We all know what happens with Kirk Cousins. We've done... Kirk, we've used Kirk Cousins more in realistic rebuilds than any other player this year. And uh, we kind of have a good feel that he's not the best when it comes to his sim. You need to have, like, 90-plus players all around him for him to win. And it's looking like the offense is being too much right now. Oof. Oof. Oh, this is an ugly one. Are we going to drop a 40 bomb? We got to drop a 44 bomb. Good God. Jay Gruden can't believe it. I can't believe Jay Gruden still has a job after that one. Jared Goff, 235 yards, one TD on the day. What did Mr. Todd do? Mr. Todd with two TDs. Mr. Chubb with two TDs. The Georgia boys, dim Georgia boys, got after it. And look at that. The Patriots lost to the Steelers, so we don't have to worry about playing the Patriots if we can crack the Steelers. The Super Bowl. And the Chargers lost. We are, if we can get to the Super Bowl, we're going to win. The two premier your fuck teams are already out. I guess the Steelers are number three. Let's move on. We are one game away from the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go in the NFC Championship game against the Saints. They don't have Drew Brees, but they usually always find a guy that can come in and pretty much be the MVP. It's Ben Barton. It's a rookie. But we have, come on. You got to be able to match them with some touchdowns. With touchdowns, baby. Come on. There we go. You're not going to let Ben Barton go over Goff and Gurley, I don't think so. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's pull ahead. Let's get to another Super Bowl. Let's try to win. Let's not be the Bills. No. No. Come on. Seal the deal. Why aren't they why aren't they kicking field goals? Why do we miss a field goal there? Come on! We have, if we lose this one, that's gonna be absolutely brutal. There we go. That's brutal. I don't know how many times are we going to be able to try. I'm playing it. I'm going in. I can't do this. I can't see my team fail that many times. What was that? Why was Chew the Clock on? Can anyone explain to me what we just saw? <laughs> Get Super Bowl on the line and Madden's inclination is as soon as you pop in with no timeouts. 30 second runoff. This game is terrible. This is a terrible game. Uninstall your... I'm glad Far Cry came with today. Uninstall this game from my hard drive. That was terrible. That is the worst user experience I've ever seen. Terrible. All right, so here is our draft class. Um, first round. We had two first round picks because we traded out of the first round last year. Uh, so we got the first round pick, number two, very studly middle linebacker, our biggest need, 81 overall, superstar dev. We made it Devin White from LSU. He very well may be the top middle linebacker in next year's draft class. As you can see, phenomenal stats there. Uh, with our second first round pick at 78, we got a 78 corner with quick dev, which we made Julian Love from Notre Dame, very productive corner. Uh, probably will be a fringe first, second round talent next season. Uh, in the second round, we got a 78 overall right guard who will probably start normal dead. So we made it Ben Powers from Oklahoma. Uh, one of the big time run blockers there for Baker Mayfield and Rodney Anderson and everyone in between. And other than that, though, we just had a good draft class. I didn't modify anyone. We got a 75 wide receiver here. Superstar dev. Good God. We need to find a way. We have, we're just absolutely stacked. Um, I was thinking about modifying this guy just for the fact that I don't know if he's even going to be able to see the field and utilize that superstar dev. We're going to wait. Uh, we got a 76 D tackle in the third round. He's a defensive end that was, you know, a little bit undersized for a 3-4 D tackle, but, you know, we'll, we'll work with it. We need depth behind Sue. 
Uh, 75 right guard. A couple of yeah, 76 left guard in the sixth round. And it took just basically a couple flyers at the end. But overall, very good draft class. We needed a middle linebacker desperately, and we got it. So let's move on to year number three and see if we can make yet another deep playoff run. All right, so as we get ready for year number three, here is our lineup. Looking very odd. Gurley's a nice 98. Our wide receivers haven't really developed whatsoever because we are just that much of a running team. So hopefully, you know, I don't know how I can change the scheme. I don't know if I want to change the scheme. Oh, that's been a little annoying. What I'm actually going to do is make Goat our, our starting tight end. Uh, offensive line is getting that much better. We have Connor. Actually, I'm, I really want Connor Williams to play now. We'll go Connor Williams right now. That's a, that's a little bit of a risk going from a B to a B minus, but the future is now. Uh, in reality, we're probably you know even if Wilbur doesn't retire this year, we'll cut him because his cap hits uh, not the sexiest sexiest. But our offensive line is all Bs right now, and uh, should be able to get everyone into maybe B plus territory. But in the season, we get that OL boost. Uh, defense is looking that much better now. We brought in Anthony Barr. Now I was trying to upload a video to Twitter. That video of the just the chew the clock. So I just did free agency stuff because it took forever for that to upload. And we're able to land Anthony Barr, a big time free agent. We're spending a little carelessly. We might not be able to uh, re-sign one of our own, but you know I still think we have enough money aside for golf. Uh, but the fact that we went from very bad to, basically we went from Mark Barron being our best linebacker to him being our worst in one season, uh, which is pretty good. I'll, uh, we still need another corner here. I think I'm going to actually give Julian Love the start over Robo Col Roby Coleman. And Roby Coleman can move back into that nickel role where he belongs. Uh, but yeah, our defense got better. This is definitely the strongest team so far. When the base off of the success we saw the first two years, you would assume that we should be able to at least get into the playoffs and have enough opportunity. But Madden 18 logic dictates this is going to be our worst season and we'll be last in the division. That being said, let's get into it. All right, so here we are at contract time, and something interesting, I guess just because going best player available in real life doesn't really translate to Madden. Usually you just, you know, you draft for your needs, and usually you can find a stud. Um, so Sue needs to come back, Brock needs to come back, Goff needs to come back, but Higby, if we didn't draft, say, Gallus Dodder, we, you know, seventh round, got an excellent tight end, we'd probably have to set, you know, set aside a decent amount of money to bring back Higby. Now he's expendable. We could just, we could move, um... Uh, Garrett, uh, uh, Gerald Everett, back to backup tight end. He'll probably be an 80. And we have Godert now. We actually went with our starter. Whitworth will be gone as well. So, you know, hey, it worked out. We actually are finding a way to manage the cap here with the Rams. Hmm. Mr. Jared Goff, I'm going to introduce you to the school of business ran by the Washington Redskins. I I'm going to enjoy, like a pimp, to an Edeline Ho, slapping that franchise tag right across your jawline coming into the season. I thank you very much. All right, so here we go at season's end of year number three, and there we go in the wild card, the very nice 11 and five wild card, which is not ridiculous. The 12 and four really gets annoying. But 11 and five, I mean, that's somewhat realistic for a wild card spot, especially in the NFC. I mean, the AFC, you know, eight and eight probably gets you in the wild card. Uh, we're second in the NFC West with that, the Cardinals, 12 and four. Kind of coming out of nowhere there. Look at how we did. Goff finally did something. 3,700 passing yards, 35 TDs, 10 picks. So we threw the ball a little bit more. I really wish I could compare the attempts because maybe we just threw the ball more in general. That's why his numbers were better. Uh, but we might, you know, much need it. And, you know, we will tag him anyways because he wants to be a douchebag. Uh, look at the running attack. Oh, my God. Todd, like, it's elite offense. 1,700 rushing yards, 13 TDs, 550 and 10 from Nick Chubb. Beast. Uh, as far as receiving is concerned, 79 catches, 1,000 yards, 8 TDs from Robert Woods. We got 600 yards, 7 TDs from Cooper Cup, 606 from Dallas Goder, 709 from Michael Gallup. And, you know, we also got production here from Higby, from Chubb, and Gurley as well. And on the defensive front, we got 119 tackles from rookie Devin White, two tackles for loss and a sack. Anthony Byer, 105 tackles, six sacks, and an interception. Our front three. We got 17 sacks, 12 tackles for loss from Aaron Donald, 9 sacks, 7 tackles for loss from Brockers, 18 tackles for loss, and 7 and a half sacks from Sue. Uh, Haynes Andrus. You know, man, you know what I'm thinking? I know that you know, it's another Madden glitch, because, you know, we're kind of exposing Madden here a little bit. We have the 3 4, right? But the, the Rams under Fisher are running a 4 3. So they probably stole the 4 3 playbook, because there's no way that, you know, a backup nose tackle gets that much, like that kind of stat line. Hmm. Okay. Um, whatever. Um, 
yeah, moving on. Seven picks, Marcus Peters. Stud. Best corner in a rebuild. Uh, three picks from LaMarcus Joyner. There we go. Not everything else was pretty respectable. Look at the yearly awards here. MVP went to Le'Veon Bell with no Rams making a list. Okay, not even 35 touchdowns for Goff can get him on that list. You can fuck yourself. Uh, Alpha's Play of the Year in the NFC went to David Johnson with Todd Gurley coming in number three. Jared Goff at number six. Defensive Play of the Year went to Aaron Donald. Very nice and very well deserved. Uh, Anthony Barr, free agency signing, coming in number nine. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to the Vikings first round pick, you would assume. Defensive Rookie of the Year went to the Panthers player, where Devin White coming in at number two. Uh, Andrus, the backup tackle, at number seven. And Julian Love at number nine. So some nice accolades there. Getting a little bit of respect around the league for our defensive rookies. So it's year three. I feel like we're only getting better. So we're going to go. Plus, we got a whole bunch of XP to spend. But we're going to go one more year, just simming it out, see what happens. And then year four, that will be where we put our foot on their throats and uh, try to put it away so we don't have to go the full five years. So let's see what happens here in this wildcard game via the sim at Mercedes Benz Stadium. Take it on the 10 and 6 Atlanta Falcons. All right, so we are year three wild card against the Atlanta Falcons. My gut's saying L. My gut is saying L on this one, but you know we've had a good playoff run every single time we've made it. So why, you know, why would this year be different? A little bit longer, have to go the wild card route, but our team's good. So we're ten ten ball game. Looks like that's probably gonna be the score line here at halftime. Uh, psych seventeen ten. Oh, there we go, the body. Like, ultimately, I will say that this Rams team has been the best sim team, I think, that we've used in a rebuild. Like, more often than not, you know, we're one and done for the most part until I take over. But this is Rams team. We've won, like, two, three games, two, th at least two playoff games every single year. So it looks like we're going to at least get an opportunity to go to the NFC Divisional Round. With a f we were dropping 40 balls left, right, and center. But guarantee Todd Gurley had one hell of a game here. Look at the final box scores. Our victory over the Atlanta Falcons. Todd Gurley, 151 yards, two TDs here from Jared Goff. You know, the run game, look at that. two TDs, no picks. That, that is a lethal. That might be one of the most dominant combinations we've seen here in a rebuild in quite some time. And yeah, we're moving on to the NFC Divisional Round. All right, so here we are in the Divisional Round against the division-winning rival Cardinals. Their team's an 80 overall. So I'm kind of like low-key want to see what their team's built of. Because that might give us like a hint of how a shitty team can win in the sim. Because uh, in 80 overall, they were like one of the top seeds in football. And that just does not happen. So, um, maybe I'll do a little bit of a deep dive. Like if we lose, we're a 91 overall team with a 95 defense. This is an 80 overall Cardinals team. Come on. They look like they play, they're playing some pretty good defense. And our defense is kind of falling flat here a little bit. But we're going to keep on pounding, baby. We're going to close it up. We're going to clutch it. Come on, let's clutch the victory. Let's clutch the victory, team. Come on. Come on. Get the job done. Defense, show up. You're a 95 defense. And we did. There you go. Suck it, 80 overall Cardinals. We're going back to the NFC Championship game. Pass defense must have been really good. Look at that. Okay, well, everyone played pretty well. Um, but there you go. 156, three TDs from Todd Gurley. And we got an also touchdown in there from like our running attack is just violent. It's like the Georgia Bulldogs in real life last year with Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. So we're moving on to the championship. Let's get let's get are we gonna go like this is near Buffalo Bill Jim Kelly era esque performances. Let's seal the deal. Alright, NFC Championship. We got the Vikings. Let's get it done. We just, we just did the Vikings. Now it's time for the Rams to get theirs. All right? Gang, gang. Theo Vaughn, baby. 21 to 10, 21, 13 and a half. Can we just get the lead? Can we get a little sum sum at the end of that? Oh, we can't. I think, I think we get one more TD. I feel confident that we'll seal the deal here. This long drive. not a lot of big strikes here from either team. So each way, it's just methodical. It's chewing the clock and we're dropping a 30 bomb here. We are definitely dropping the 30 bomb. Come on, hold off. We made it close and competitive at the end. But still, the prolific offense is just too much for the very good Minnesota Vikings defense. With Drew Brees at quarterback. I remember I posted that question on Twitter when the Saints were kind of dilly-dallying, re-signing Drew Brees in free agency this year. I was like, man, I'm the Vikings. I'm giving him two years, like, friggin' $60 million. 
But they look like it might have been the Goff show. 244, three touchdowns here from Jared Goff. A pick each. He got 140 yards, two TDs from Mr. Todd Gurley. Either way, it's pretty. We got the Texans. Look very nice. Could have pulled the Chargers. Look at the bottom ticker there in the Super Bowl. We got the Texans. We got a chance. Goff versus Watson. Watt versus Donald. Gonna be a good one. All right, here we go. Super Bowl versus the Texans. Our second attempt at a Super Bowl here in the rebuild. This is probably the most productive rebuild we've had. It's how fitting that's the final one. It's one of the most stacked teams in Madden in terms of youth and just on paper. Helps that we did the luxury of their Madden 19 roster that we rolled with. But we're looking pretty damn impressive right now. Getting off to a 17-3 score at halftime. The Texans are able to get a TD to open the second half. We're trying to equalize. We went. We didn't go for it. We kicked the field goal. We're playing it a little safe. I don't like that, but I do like how long these drives are picking. They're pretty long. They're pretty methodical. Any score here is pretty damn confident. Seal the deal. Oh, my God. We, we just sealed it. There we go. Year three, we got the Super Bowl, baby. We got the Super Bowl. We'll go through the whole ragmarole of the celebration. We're going to go one more year, and if we could have another playoff run so I could actually play with this team. We're going back to the old Madden 17 C4, where it's not so much a sim now that we got the Super Bowl all the way. I want to see if I can get my hands on it. I won't, I won't do the long playoff push, but if we can get to a Super Bowl, I'll play the moments. We get in precarious situations. I'll take over. But ultimately, we get the dub here. Like I stated, we get the dub. Um, at the end of this video, I will give us a final like win-loss tally. But looking at it right now, I don't know what the percentage is, but there's 32 teams. But we, we've done some teams twice. We did the Niners twice and the Browns twice. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13! We have 13 rebuilds that we won the Super Bowl. Others that we didn't. What is wrong with Robert Woods' hair? That guy it looks like he just deep fried his hair. He painted... For any of you guys that have ever seen the Trailer Park Boys movie, it looks like Randy where he just colored his hair in a permanent marker. That is... Come on, Madden. Pour your shit out. Now, there's the nice Super Bowl trophy for the Rams. Now it's time for us to go in and repeat it here in year number four, the final year of the rebuild. But ultimately, we at least have the security blanket of a dub... Looking who went off in the game. Looks like a nice clean... Whoa. Ooh, okay. Maybe not a clean game from golf, but our defense showed up. Stopping Deshaun Watson. 137 yards. We get the touchdown from Nick Chubb. The rushing attack is just lethal. All right. Let's go back to year four. See if we can kind of get a dynasty going here. All right. So in free agency, we brought back Aqib Tlaib on a one-year deal. And here is our drafts. Again, no real holes. I need another middle linebacker because I moved on from uh, Mark Barron because we had a franchise tag. Um, Goff, which was $21 million, so we freed up a lot of cap space by moving Tavon Austin and uh, Mark Barron. So we got an 80 overall defensive end in the first round with a normal dev. Second round, 77 middle linebacker with normal, so that's pretty much just a straight swap with what we got with Mark Barron. Uh, 76 wide receiver with a slow dev. Yeah. 74 strong safety, slow dev. Uh, yuck. And a 78 tight end, uh, slow dev. Uh, yuck. Um... That's actually like a terrifying process. 87 acceleration on a 6'6", 260. Look, I did get a mustache. Get a mustache going on. Uh, and then the rest of the draft was pretty goddamn terrible, to be honest with you. But overall, we already have the Super Bowl. This last year is just icing on the cake. Let's jump in and defend our title. All right, so to defend our title, here's our team. Goff is almost a 90, which is pretty odd. We got the perfect 99 with Gurley. Again, wide receivers have not developed as, of, you know, as I would have expected, to be completely honest with you. Uh, offensive line is still, you know, it's better than what it was last year. Uh, moving Gerald Everett back from wide receiver to tight end brought him up to an 88. So now he's our straight-up starter over Dallas Goder, which I was incredibly surprised to see. Uh, on the defense, we now have a keep to lead. Back with Marcus Peters, we got Julian Love. Defensive front, Sue is still a 90. Donald's a 99. Uh, Joyner's a 92. Johnson's an 89. Evil comes up to an 83. We actually did sign in Joe Schobert as well. So ultimately, we didn't really need to get the linebacker. But Devin White's up to an 87. Uh, hot start for him. That superstar dev as well. And of course, we got Anthony Barr, who is a 90. So this is a very good team. I'm expecting us to at least make the playoffs and to attempt to defend the crown. Let's do it. All right, at the end of the season, we got a beautiful 11-5 wildcard berth. And we're the away team for some reason. 
Uh, look at how we perform. I mean, look at that. We got two 90s now in that back, in that uh, just you know leading the team here. Everett's an 88. Price up to an 88. Oof. <whistles> Team's looking a fire. Oh, look at that. Almost, you know, Devin White, 89. Just all these guys performing. I guess for those of you that are looking for a rebuild, good to know that, you know, Ibukov, you get to an 85. You're doing long term. He's probably going to be pretty damn serviceable long term. He's probably the only guy here that's worth. I mean, Gerald Everett goes up to an 88, so he's worth not giving up on. Don't be an idiot like me and try to make him a wide receiver. So we came. Uh, oh, okay. We didn't even win the division. We came second in the division behind the Seattle Seahawks. Look at our stats on the year. Another, you know, oh my. Oh. Oh, how what the how'd that happen? 3,700 passing yards, 25 TDs, 23 picks for Jared Goff. And now I'm a little bit worried about simming this one out. Uh, oh, whoa, okay, there we go though. Almost 2,000 rushing yards for Todd Gurley, 1,600 or 1,600, 16,000 touchdowns. Almost 2,000 rushing yards, 16 TDs. We got 650 and 12 from Nick Chubb. Probably the best backfield we've had. Uh, receiving, we got almost a thousand yards, two TDs, Robert Woods, 708 from Gallup, 750 and three from Everett, 705 from Cooper Cup. And on the defensive side of things, ooh, these guys are getting a little bit old. Start the Charlie Raids. Devin White, 132 tackles and an interception, 102 tackles, two sacks from Mr. Anthony Barr. We got 17 sacks from Aaron Donald, 10 from Nadama Kinsu, nine and a half from Michael Brockers. Michael Brockers has been pretty good in the sim. Low key, and his contract to resign for much of this whole rebuild is like $30 million. So he's a nice little bit of a budget guy. Uh, the interception front, we got four picks. Marcus Peters, two from Julian Love, and a couple singles. Looking at the yearly awards. MVP went to Russell Wilson. Okay, good to know. Wow, Todd Gurley with almost 2,000 rushing yards comes there. I think he got slipped on a little bit. Looking in the NFC Offensive Player of the Year. There we go. Todd Gurley got the Offensive Player of the Year, and you're damn right he did. He was the Player of the Year, went to Luke Keekley with Devin White coming in at number 8 and Aaron Donald at number 10. Let's just see if we had any Rams here. Nope, for Offensive and for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Another big time nope. But yeah, like here's what we're going to do. I'm going to play the moments. We'll step in when need be, just so I can play with this team just a little bit, and then if we get to the Super Bowl, I'll play that game. So we're walking in here to U.S. Bank Stadium, taking on the 9-7 and seven Minnesota Vikings with a Jarek off that looks like he's struggling immensely in this sim. Is this going to go good? Is it going to go bad? Probably bad. Let's find out. All right, so here we go. Hopefully I don't have to take this one over. And it looks like there's a Jared Goff interception right away. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, get this off. Oh, whoa, Jesus Christ. We're not even getting an opportunity to come in and play some ball here. Third down alert. Might as well. Don't feel. I feel like. I feel like we won the Super Bowl, and now the the scripting is coming in. They're like, no, nah, there's no chance. How we're gonna let them win it again? They're not gonna repeat. We're gonna make Jared Goff, who's you know at his strongest, playing on a franchise tag. So you know, playing like he wants to. Oh my God, that's terrible. Playing like he wants to get paid big time money, and he's just gonna be an absolute liability. That was a terrible throw. Two-minute drill from the 20-yard line. Skip some points here. We'll start with the split, split screen. You know, you want to ban the run in a time like this, but when Todd Gurley is your pretty much best weapon, we're going to need to find ways to get him the ball. They read the screen pass pretty good. Oh, we're going to hit him with a little razzle-dazzle there. We got a full slate of timeouts. We got two minutes. I, let's see. I don't. We don't really have much speed, to be honest with you. Let's see what we can do here. It's going to be always tough to try to challenge this Vikings secondary. Oh, Gurley, come on. Oh, come on, Todd. Well, all right, we'll, we'll get the first down. We'll get the first down with Jared Goff. Okay, look, he's, I don't know what the, what are you celebrating like that for, bro? You're playing like ass. You're playing like Blake Bortles. Okay. Oh, my God, why is, we'll not go towards Harrison Smith. We'll see if Michael Gallup can get her on the outside, which looks like he does if we get enough time. Oh, let's go, Michael Gallup. I saw that all day long, pulling us back. We're just going to throw it not to where Harrison Smith is. So let's get that 56-yard TD to put us right back in spot to, you know, come back in this game. Do not feel like playing defense right now. And, uh, yeah. Well, the game already predetermined that we're going to get absolutely smoked. We'll come in on fourth down just play this team a little bit here. Fourth and 15. Let's see if we can read the defense and make another big-time Hail Mary play. So they're going to have... Air Smith is jumping. All right, Rob Woods. I'll give you a chance. We can get a pocket for you. Oh, we'll just throw right there. The Cooper Cup. And he drops. Oh. 
He has like 94 catching. Yeah, you know, that's what happens in Madden. Stats mean nothing in Madden. It's like, whose line is it anyway? The points are made up and no one it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Alright, I guess this welcome to this gameplay where it's just gonna be me trying to throw it deep on the Vikings D. To try oh my god. Try and make some plays. Look, my offensive line just did a front flip. My center, Billy Price, 88 superstar. Just did a front flip. Can we get a replay of his front flip? So we're gonna be able to we're gonna be able to get a replay of that. Let's see what my center's doing here. Okay, so they're blocking here. Tries to lock up 98. I think that's Linval Joseph. He gets terrified. And then out of nowhere... Oh, look, they trip over each other. Because <laughs> an offensive line full of goddamn pro bowlers, that's what happens. They have the awareness of a doorknob. You gotta love Madden. You gotta love playing on Sim mode. You know, remember the Sim mode? For a more realistic experience, play on the Sim mode. Oh, yes, I would like my, my all pros just to, you know... They do front flips. I just like them doing gymnastics in my backfield. In a game that we should definitely win. A game where I think the Vikings are not a bad team, but I'm pretty sure I saw the rating was an 87 or 88. My team's a 93. And uh, not playing like it. Well, let's see if we can fit that one in there. Cooper Cup actually catches it. And can't outrun the linebacker. Okay. Cooper Cup catches the ball and can't run over a, you know, Above average linebacker speed. I think Kedrick's probably is what low 80s. Can't outrun it. Okay. At least you know we're doing much better than the Sim did. Oh right there, B. That's what I want. Oh. We're going no huddle. We're gonna come back. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come up with some sort of game plan. We're gonna do a shark halfback wheel. We're gonna hit Todd Gurley, who's gonna get. I think that's Ben Gideon on the outside in one on one. Right there. And there's Todd Grove with touchdown. I called it. These stiff arms, the living shit out of this dude with crusty ass dreads in the end zone. Call your shots, baby. So let's see this defense get us a stop. Yeah, I just gotta run the clock out. Alright, whatever. We won our Super Bowl. The Sim did not want us to win. Like, for no, for other, some, some inexplicable reason, our prolific offense had Jared Goff as a, was he 91 overall? 90, 91 overall. 25 TDs, 23 picks. Um, it's the way she goes. It's, it's, this is the perfect way to end the Madden 18 realistic rebuilds. We won the Super Bowl. We're going on with a dub. But ultimately, we're going to finish just confused, somewhat unsatisfied. It just, you know, we're not angry. I'm not mad. You're just, you're just disappointed. But I hope you weren't disappointed in this rebuild. If you're a Rams fan, you've been waiting for quite some time for this time to happen. And uh, we got that Super Bowl. We got that dub. We, Like I said, we finished with, what was it, 13? 13 victories. And, you know, just do the math. However many teams, 32. So 13 out of 32, 33, 34. So we did 34 rebuilds this year. And by my math, a.k.a. by Microsoft Calculator... Okay, we'll round it up. We run about forty percent of our rebuilds this year. Um, the bar has been set low, but I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that Mad 19. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm cautiously optimistic that Mad 19 is gonna be a much better game than Madden 18. It is in like undisputed that Madden 17 was a better game than Madden 18. I feel like Madden 19 is gonna be the better of the three of the two. And uh, rebuilds are going to be fun again. Because let's be honest, these rebuilds, for me, they're never boring. They're never like a chore. I always enjoy doing them because I innovate. These are my baby. No matter what you watch, you might click other realistic rebuilds. Other games. This this is realistic rebuilds. I've crossed. They're in FIFA. They're in baseball. They're in basketball. You know Papa created that shit. And I'm always going to love my baby. No matter what. No matter what trials and tribulations. But I can also do it with a smile. And a smile is something I haven't had in quite some time when dealing with the play the moments in the Madden Sim. Hopefully Madden 19 brings my smile back. Hopefully you guys will come right back for that when we boot that up. So as always, thank you for watching the Realistic Rebuilds. If there's something that you want to see me do for a new series that may involve a rebuild, let me know. There's a free, you know, every Friday. Thank you guys for tuning in. Every Friday for the last, whatever, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Almost uh, eight months. I very much appreciate it. 
Thanks for all the love and support. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed all the Madden 18 realistic refills. We'll be back next year in Madden 19. Till next time, it's C4 taking a bow, saying peace out.